Hey guys and welcome to World of Warships with Bunevu. In today's video I will continue the series of uh, my tips and tricks and advice on how to progress within the second season of Rank Battles. Uh, again the same disclaimer, I, can, I am totally talking about uh, the progression between the Rank 9 uh, and up because that's the rank I started from. I know that uh, the ranks between 25 and 10 are slightly different, mainly due to the difference of experience with of your uh, teammates. But uh, many of the things I want to talk about here uh, will apply in the other tiers as well. So I have a couple of clips for you today. I want to show you a couple of things that I apply within either any every one of these clips or a particular thing that uh, is uh, very visible in a particular one. Uh, the first one that I want to start with is on the map north and obviously as with the previous video the first thing I want to talk about is the team list and uh, here it's pretty obvious that uh, we have a battleship uh, advantage and this is being offset by the fact that uh, the enemy team has got uh, two very strong gunboats, two Russian destroyers which means that the initial uh, cap control may actually fall to them simply because they will outgun our two Japanese destroyers. As far as the players and my experience with them on the enemy team, the only person uh, I recognize is the Yamagi captain. Uh, right now I've seen him in ranks 4 and 5 which means that he is quite a proficient captain and he will be the major threat. The other captains I don't know them. Uh, this is a rank 9 battle and uh, I don't know him. I, I, there's nothing I can tell about them and uh, on my side I have played with and against the Fubuki captain and I know that he is someone I can count on and again the rest of the team is uh, a bit of a question mark for me. So let's uh, move on to the battle itself right now and uh, again as with the previous video, I will General be quarters. using the Control X and the left bottom side of the screen and the RMB which stands for right mouse button sign on the right bottom bottom right side of the screen uh, basically to indicate whenever I'm using these uh, to align my guns or to keep my guns aligned when I'm looking around to make sure that I'm safe. So I'm starting on the south and my way of uh, winning uh, while sailing a cruiser is to divide the, the fleet slightly. I know this is a little bit unorthodox within the ranked battles community but I have had many much success with uh, this kind of a tactic. So what I want to do is I want to send, as you can see in the chat, I want to send the majority of my team to contest uh, the A cap, I, I honestly doubt they will manage to cap it straight away because of uh, the said gunboats that I mentioned before. And myself, I'm uh, going s almost straight to the B cap. Uh, I usually, if I start on this side of the map, I usually try to stick close to that island to my left and uh, with, the, with the hopes of basically setting a, a um, battleship on fire on my way to the other cap. And same as with the previous video, I strongly recommend that if you see on the enemy list someone that you know is a dangerous player, I would strongly recommend informing your uh, team about this. Uh, tell them that they should be targeting that particular ship because uh, he is a threat to your win. And this is the most important thing in this whole rank battles malarkey. So I take a huge hit from the Amagi which basically just pro proves the fact that he is a dangerous player. He managed to uh, land a really devastating hit on me while I was quite angled. So here I'm, I see that Fubuki, um, enemy Fubuki at the far side of the cap and he's trying to cap right now. I got a little bit greedy, I thought that I would stop and uh, shoot at him but it, uh, I quickly changed my mind simply because I, I know that it would just take too long and I've got much more important things to do. Right, so um, it's uh, 
it's getting a bit interesting here because it seems that the enemy Mogami decided to do the exact same thing as I did. And, uh, you know, it's always a bit tricky. The, the, this corner of the map is always a bit tricky. Everybody's trying to just try to figure out when to come out to avoid the inevitable torpedoes. And this Fuki gives me an amazing chance because he shoots all, the, all of his torpedoes straight away. And I'm expecting those people, uh, the people on the other side to see the torpedoes and realize that well, assume that now it's safe to come out and um, basically run into my tor straight into my torpedoes. So um, what I'm doing is I'm loading AP. I want to kill the Mogami first because he is a bigger threat to me. I shoot a really nice uh, volley uh, taking out his engines and landing two citadel heads and a couple other heads and I do really short work of him he wasn't expecting that and I'm sure that uh, even he appreciated my tactics and I'm also sure that uh, this uh, dead moment happens to every single one of you and uh, I'm not immune to that either I ran into an island I wasn't looking I was too busy enjoying my victory over this Mogami. So now we know that uh, the Kiev is still there, I've already switched to HE and my Fubuki is trying to come in and contest the cap and I'm prepared to shoot as soon as I see him and there's the Fubuki coming out now. He's obviously engaging uh, the... Uh, sorry that's the Kiev coming out now. Uh, he's uh, obviously engaging our Fubuki. Uh, who narrowly misses uh, the Kiev's torpedoes and uh, another development is that there is another cruiser uh, New Orleans coming out and I need to take account of this and, and I need to be prepared for that so I'm sticking to HE for now um, the New Orleans is quite vulnerable to HE in my opinion and I still know that the Kiev is there so I want to keep the HE simply because killing that Kiev is basically killing another ship and this is much more important right now so I land a really nice shot on the Kiev Kiev is basically dead and the cap is ours so uh, the lesson from this particular clip is basically if you want to be successful in uh, being a good uh, cruiser captain and you believe in your skills, you know that you can handle uh, being outnumbered and uh, you want to be actually contribute to the win of your team quite significantly, then uh, try to convince your team that it's, good, it's a good idea to divide your forces, join up with a destroyer and choose the cap where you think he might need some help. So I shoot this uh, HE volley towards the New Orleans and automatically straight away stra uh, change into uh, AP because he is getting a beautiful broadside and I'm not gonna pass on this. Uh, the AP is almost loaded. I align my guns. Shoot away. And continue back to the A cap because my job here is done even if the New Orleans decides to come back here to the B cap it will be too late and it's very unlikely anyway because after that paddling that I just gave him who would come back here and he knows that he's outnumbered here so uh, and it's only two ships left when you look at the map so uh, yeah so that's all I wanted to show you in this particular clip and uh, mo let's move on to the next one and now we're moving on to the second clip uh, I'm not I'm skipping the team list talk down here because uh, it's a very short clip I just want to talk about how to effectively use your guns while sailing a cruiser so basically the my theory of uh, what the cruisers are supposed to be doing in um, ranked battles is basically the exact copy of what I chase uh, thinks about what the role of the Japanese cruisers is basically they're supposed to be an escort to uh, destroyers contesting uh, certain part, parts of the map. So um, I start off with uh, communi communicating with the uh, destroyer that's following me. I decide to slow down a little bit and uh, let, he let him through 
Uh, I want him to give me some vision before I sneak out. And now that he's passed, uh, I want to talk about the use of the guns. Um, so basically, I realize that not every single one of you will be as proficient a sniper as I am. Well, that wasn't planned. I wasn't planning to actually bump into him, but uh, uh, there's no damage. So, uh, yeah, so basically, I know that I can hit most of the times. I can hit uh, about 60 to 70 percent of a full broadside volley uh, uh, the destroyer that is maneuvering and is about 10 kilometers away. I, I know I can do this uh, quite reliably. So I usually shoot in broadsides. Uh, I shoot with full volleys, uh, like with this one. Uh, that's obviously much closer, but uh, that's basically the point. I know that I can do this. So yes, that was uh, pretty straightforward. And now I want to show you how to behave when you are unsure of uh, whether or not you're actually giving enough lead. So let's uh, fast forward a little bit uh, in this battle. Uh, the, the negative dies very quickly. Okay, so uh, we're back. The Nagato has just died and I'm writing to the team that we should push in on this side. Uh, it looks like the, the A cup side of the map is secure uh, and I see my first target and it's, it's the um, enemy Hatsuhara that I've been engaging before. So this is it, uh, ripple fire. I'm, I'm not entirely sure of my aim. So I'm um, spreading my shots because it's easier to adjust and actually track a moving and uh, a moving target that is also changing direction if you spread your shots away around and you actually have much less wait time before your guns are reloaded. So as you can see, I, I shot those three shots now and my first two guns are already reloaded and I can continue the barrage even though the Hatsuhara not, not only has changed direction but also has uh, change its speed uh, to throw my aim off and that's how the Hatsuharu dies very quickly within basically two volleys worth of my attention. So again that's all I wanted to show you from this particular replay and uh, let's move on to a yet another one. And guys now we're moving on to the third clip and again same story I'm, I'm skipping the um, enemy team list uh, uh, because this again is going to be quite a short one I just want to talk about one thing and this right now is your spotting range now your spotting range and the fact that you actually know it and are aware of your distance between you and your enemies is uh, your lifeline uh, cruisers are very brittle they're really easy to kill I've uh, one shot at uh, Atagos uh, in my Amagi from uh, 15 kilometers from full health, so you really need to watch out for that. So uh, again, uh, we're doing the exact same thing as in the previous two clips. The majority of the team is going to the A cup, and I'm uh, planning to help my uh, destroyer, the Fubuki, to contest the B cup. We just want to contest it. We we are not really planning to uh, to cap it. Uh, but this is where it gets sour because. The moment I shoot my guns and I reveal my position, it turns out that the whole enemy's fleet is actually much closer than I expected and we become the target of basically the whole fleet right now. So um, I still don't know this and now I'm starting to realize in just how much trouble I am as the enemy ships uh, start popping up on the map. So I'm already under fire. I used my uh, sonar just in case there were any torpedoes coming in that the Fubuki uh, ma didn't manage to pick up on. I still continue on my course. I'm hoping that I'll manage to um, help the Fubuki cap or at least kill the destroyer that is uh, that must be in the cap as well as we are not really progressing with the capping. So just look look what I'm um, up against. Uh, the Atago, Amagi, Miyoko, they're all closer than 12.5 kilometers to me and uh, 
I'm in a lot of trouble because I know that I'm gonna have to show my broadside twice. So I'm doing, I'm doing it right now. And as I continue my turn, I know that I'm gonna have to show my broadside to those ships again in a second. So uh, at this point, I know that uh, our time of contesting the B cap is over. I just want to basically survive. I want to get out of there alive and still be a contribution to my team. I stopped being spotted for a moment, but the enemy Sims is spotting me again. I keep shooting as uh, I know that I am within the detection range of uh, the Sims, whether or not I am shooting. So why not use that chance and use those guns that are basically trained on his position to help the allied Fubuki get away in one piece. So as uh, you can see I am scoring some really good hits on the, on the sims uh, but my priority here again is to get out alive of this situation, from this situation. I have two cruisers and a battleship uh, on a, in hot pursuit right behind me, uh, less than 12 and a half kilometers behind me. And after I shoot uh, this volley, I stop shooting. And 20 seconds after that, my detected icon should disappear. And the plan is to... It's very tempting because they are still shooting. I mean, they, they know my position and they are shooting at me. And it's very tempting to return fire basically out of... You know, if somebody's shooting at you, you wanna, you wanna shoot back. But uh, if I if I do right now, it's just... It just means my funeral. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I keep, in, keep sailing in this direction. And I wanna check... Uh, I just... I'm basically waiting for the enemy ships to decide that there are much better targets and... The Yamagi is doing it already. Uh, it seems that the Miyoko may be doing it right now as well. So that's the moment where I decide to engage the enemy again. And again, if uh, the Amagi decided to shoot at me and actually deal some significant damage, I know that it's just a matter of 20 seconds and I will be able to disappear, uh, use my damage repair consumable and uh, repair some of my health and uh, still be a useful member of my team. So that's all I wanted to show you in this particular clip. I think this is uh, one of the most important things that you need to be aware of when you are sailing your cruiser. Your protection range is your lifeline. Okay guys, uh, one more short clip for you. Uh, this particular battle is on the ocean map again, which is a very cool map, map, map for me because basically you are, um, your survival and your win depends on your ability to maneuver and angle your ship basically. So what happened in this uh, battle, we slightly veered off of the um, team split up. I, I, I am an advocate of, uh, we managed to actually go as a whole team towards the A cap and the enemy team was very sheepish in its approach towards the A cap and uh, basically we managed to not only cap it way before they arrived there but also the majority of the fleet got is and is actually right now as you can see is being engaged by our fleet so they basically have no chance of contesting uh, the A cap so as I was the closest one to the B cap I decided to move north and then uh, and circle uh, the opponents as uh, you can see uh, their uh, formation is completely messed up they, they, there are ships going in all kinds of directions and I believe that this is a clear sign that they are doomed they, they are not going to win this another interesting thing in this particular battle is the fact that we've actually got uh, tier 7 carriers with us and uh, a very funny 
twist on this whole thing is the fact that the enemy carrier decided to uh, go on a full attack load that he doesn't he doesn't have a single fighter uh, so our carrier has got a field day and uh, killing off his planes so that's another uh, nail to, to the enemy team's coffin and we we, we basically we, it would be really hard to lose this right now so what I wanted to talk about right now is uh, the fact that you really have to be observant and you really have to understand the mechanics of how ships behave in certain conditions so my next target will be the enemy ranger and I will make a really big mistake while uh, attacking it for the first time when I release my first volley the moment it's actually it actually gets in the air I already know that I'm going to miss and there we go I hope that you're spotting my mistake right now. You see it? Do you know what uh, what I did wrong? What I didn't notice? Look at that ship again. Uh, do you see that smoke and the fire coming from its funnels? This is the indication that the the ranger just got hit in his engines and he was rapidly losing speed. And I should have picked up on it and adjusted my aim. Now I know what's happened, and this is the second volley. And that is my reward. Now the ranger is picking up speed again, but there is no chance he's gonna pick enough speed to actually avoid this. And I bug myself, I carry it. And guys, now moving on to the last clip, I want to talk about the torpedoes. I am assuming that you're using Japanese cruisers because, as in my opinion, they are the, the only viable option in uh, rank battles this season. Uh, so you will have torpedoes. Right, so as you can see, I am moving towards uh, dangerously close to this uh, Amagi. By the way, a shout out to this Amagi's captain, uh, Sexy Gun. I just, I just love your nick. Just, you know, it's amazing. Wish I thought about that. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm really close, four and a half kilometers uh, away from this Amagi, and uh, I decide that uh, in order to preserve, in order to preserve my life, I will have to hide behind this island. So uh, I shot the first volley of torpedoes, basically just to discourage them to come any closer. And now, as I'm hiding behind this island, I'm observing the Amagi's movement very closely on the map, and I'm also observing the uh, torpedo aiming cone and the moment I realized that the Amagi will go through most likely will go between those two islands uh, to the south um, uh, releasing a torpedo volley uh, a torpedo spread in his direction uh, the torpedoes is something that you really cannot forget that you have uh, they are an amazing area denial tool and you should be using them in such way. So uh, I forget about the Amagi and uh, I respond to uh, a call for help from uh, one of our allied uh, destroyers. Uh, I kill the uh, cruiser that was threatening the destroyer and uh, while I do this I get a really nice, very rewarding two uh, torpedo hits on the Amagi and uh, as you can see the Amagi is still uh, losing health points so uh, he cannot uh, stop the uh, he cannot stop the flooding and one quick uh, HE volley towards the Amagi and now he's dead so yeah remember about your torpedoes Right, so uh, this will be all I wanted to talk about in my uh, Rank Battles Cruiser uh, tips and tricks. Uh, basically, to recap, I want you to remember four things. Uh, first of all, talk to your team, and this uh, applies to every single ship you are sailing, every single class, not only uh, the uh, cruisers, but everything. Basically, talk to your team, communicate. Uh, tell them about the enemies uh, that you know are dangerous and uh, make sure that you know everybody's on the same page. 
Uh, second, as a Japanese uh, cruiser, your job is to be right behind your destroyers. You you are supposed to be protecting them, and that's my second point: to protect your destroyers, make sure that uh, the, um, their effort to contest a car is being uh, successful. Uh, the third one and really important one is uh, make sure that you are aware of your detection range and you use it to your advantage uh, either to sneak up on somebody or to get away from a situation that is uh, deadly. And uh, yeah, I uh, I do die in ranked battles as well. I just wanted to make sure that you, you're aware of this as well. So uh, I left this clip going on. Um, nobody's immune to doing stupid things. You just, you know, all you can do is just to try to limit it as much as possible. And uh, yeah, the, the last, the, the fourth point that I think is a quite valuable one when sailing, uh, when sailing cruises in rank battles is to use your torpedoes and in this particular case uh, the Atago is an absolute king among the Japanese cruisers simply because it also has uh, front uh, mounted torpedoes you can also shoot your torpedoes to the front as you could see in my uh, aiming cone when I, whenever I was using torpedoes in those clips and uh, I think this will be all, that's all I wanted to tell you about. I hope that this has been informative to you and that you uh, enjoyed uh, watching this clip. And please uh, rate it down below uh, if you did. And I definitely think about hitting that subscribe button if you think that you would like to see more of my materials. So that will be all for now. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time.